All right, guys, welcome back to Functional Fitness Weekly. This is episode four. Uh, we're going to stay mainly on the Olympic train this week. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Like, like we said in the past videos, it comes around once every four years, the summer game. So we really, uh, as, as former athletes, as somewhat current athletes and fitness professionals, we just can't get enough of this type of stuff. So, uh, Mario, how was your week? Dude, it was jam packed. Uh, Ashley had her family baby shower this weekend, which was um, it was awesome, man. A bunch of love, bunch of presents. It was a good time. And then yesterday, uh, we went on the boat with uh, oh, cool. Jenny and Dave and all them, and oh, cool. uh, we had a good time out there. So uh, yeah, it was it was a long weekend, but it was fun. Did you get any sun? I can't tell. You just look brown. Brown, bro. That's that Cuban skin. That Cuban yeah, line. I definitely got some sun for sure my back is a little sensitive right now but uh it's gonna get some sun That's what about cool. you bro uh well as you know but the audience might not know as i started my own youtube channel so that's been it's been fun i'm gonna have to slow down <laughs> as i started so, off way too hot with the amount of videos i was doing just yeah. because you get infatuated with something new a new project so i'm really just gonna have to find a balance uh putting out maybe two at the most maybe three videos a week um, well, it's not, well, that's what people don't understand. It's not making the video. It's the post edit that just right. crushes your heart and soul. Oh, yeah. you know, we nope. have a million ideas right. for making videos, but cutting them and doing right. all that, people don't understand how much work that is. Yeah. Filming is just maybe a third of the time. So, well, I love them, man. I'm enjoying them. So, uh, keep Thanks, in your arms, son. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's hop into the first topic. Uh, the, the Rio Olympics, um, 2016, Michael Phelps wins gold in final race of career. Okay, this is by CBS Sports. I actually stayed up to watch this one. Uh, he was the third leg of the the relay, the 4x100 medley. Uh, uh, and he did butterfly, if I remember right. But yeah. One of, the, uh, one of the big headlines of this is, of course, Michael Phelps is going to take, you know, the main headline. But... The, the first leg, the the, ba the guy for the U.S., Ryan Murphy, who started with the backstroke, started off, he, he had an, a world record. And that was just kind of like, you know, oh, by the way, world record, but Michael Phelps gets his, you know, gold again. his, what was it, what is he out, 27 golds? I don't even know. 31? Uh, he's, no, he's, he's 23 anyway. golds, 28 okay. overall. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's incredible. I want to talk a little bit about, the quantity here in a sec, but I just wanted to get your your thoughts on on Michael Phelps's career and maybe this event. So, well, as a career, I don't think I uh, you know he's on un, he's uncomparable. You know, there's no one like him who's done what he's done for as long as he has. They said he won his first gold medal when he was 15 years old in 2000. Um, I think how he did it today, he has more peace of mind, and he keeps saying that because when he left. Uh, four years ago, you know, he, he had said multiple times he was retiring, but he just didn't have that peace of mind. And then all, all that crap that came out about substance abuse, whatever crap the articles came out of, about that photo with the bong and all that. And I just, I felt like it made it incomplete. So when he had his kid and there was some maturity there, he said that this was a, an amazing moment for him because he was able to share it with his kid. And uh, there's just more, much more peace about it, you know, so... He's an amazing athlete. I love everything about him, his hard work, his ethic. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him. Absolutely. I mean, it's just we'll, we'll never – I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again. Um, but uh, the thing with swimming is that you can just get a heap of medals unlike any other sport in the Olympics, at least – uh, if, if someone has a has a sport that I don't know about that you can get as many medals right. like it's just interesting because so many other players especially the team sport guys like the basketball and the soccer and the tennis the volleyball they play so many games where they only got they only get one at most one medal to show for it that's a really good point I think uh, like gymnastics is behind because essentially you can win six a year because oh, actually now they're moving to four but there was five individual events in gymnastics plus the overall yeah swimming is interesting because it's got four types of races and you have a team and you have those four types of races at different distances so yeah i mean you're looking at with ledecky right now who's gonna you know the, the female version to me of you know 
uh, Phelps 12 years ago. Right. She's just a phenom. But you're right. That's a really good point. I I don't think there's many other sports in uh, the Olympics that will have that propensity to have that many medals. Yeah. But he will go down as the all-time greatest in the sport and in the Olympics as well, for sure. Yeah, I would. I can't. I can't see us seeing anything greater. You know, what I was just thinking. Is I mean, that's silly. But there's not a Hall of Fame in the Olympics, is there? Is there such thing? I don't think so, but there should be. I mean, that'd be neat. That'd be really cool. The best of the best of the best. <laughs> like, right. how, well, how good yeah. can you get? Oh man. Well, I yeah. Think, so it was cool to see that. I think the closest thing you would get, it, it would have to be per country, but um. The closest thing you would get would maybe be at the, like the Olympic athlete training centers. They might have, you know, some there trophies are. and medals and stuff in there, and obviously all the records. So, but I don't even. I know there's one sure. in, in Colorado, and I think there's one on the East Coast, but I don't. I don't know my Olympic training centers by heart because uh, obviously I was never an Olympic athlete. But you know, so cool. All right, uh, let's go on to um, everyone's. Well, everyone's, I guess, favorite event in some way is the 100-meter sprint. It's just the fastest, most exciting part of, of the Olympics. Um, and these two household names, Usain Bolt and Justin Gatlin, I mean, they've been in the game for a long time, um, especially Gatlin, who's probably been in at least one more Olympics game, maybe two more than Bolt. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Gatlin was the 04 Olympic 100-meter champion then 08 uh bolt came onto the scene from jamaica and then right. no one's been able to touch him ever since but um uh one <laughs> one of the interesting things about this article is that they have a they have a decent relationship they talk sure. a lot of smack to each other uh and they go out and party together so i just, I just like the, vi the the little picture of them and their leader hosen uh for Oktoberfest. but it's pretty cool well, they, they joke about calling one the old man or something like that. Yeah. Well, Gatlin's an old man. He's 34. That's old for a sprinter. I don't... It's a... Not even sprint... Yeah, a sprinter like that, that, that event itself. Because I think the... I mean, there's physiological... Uh, I mean, there's studies done on the physiology of... Like, if you look at distance running, typically, or distance cycling is typically... Uh, best for older athletes because of the, the maturity and age of their tissue and mm -hmm. their oxidative stress. But these shorter races are definitely known for younger races and racers, and you don't mm -hmm. see that right now. I think it's going to turn back to younger racers because these guys are in the retirement mode. Right. But uh, these guys have held on for a really long time. Yeah, it's impressive. And I know Gatlin's in the past got, got caught for some performance enhancers. And that might be extending his career just a bit, but you, you have to wonder in the Olympic Games, I, you know, people are trying to do everything they can to perform at the highest level possible. Yeah, I didn't go back to that. I don't know if he was caught in the Olympics. The other thing people don't understand is how much these guys travel throughout the year, every oh, yeah. year compete in races they're doing international races all over the place so uh this is just one huge event that they do right but uh there are so many other ones so i'm not sure if he got popped for that during the olympics or some race outside of it because they're the uh, the olympics are constantly testing these guys outside of the actual season sure, so yeah yeah it's i i i know very little about international uh like track meets or anything we well, there's it. a committee that sanctions them all oh. that a lot even approves those to be considered international events and whatnot. And that's why they have one of the rights they have is to test these athletes uh, throughout the year mm. if they're going to uh, compete in these international events. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, they ran last night and uh, Bolt won again. So he's a three-time Olympic gold champ at the 100 meters. Yep. Uh, 9.81 Bolt, Gatlin in second, 9.89. So... That's a, that's a big difference in the hundred meter race. I mean, he probably had him by two. He had him by two lengths or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I didn't get a chance to watch it last night, but uh, I'll have to check it out today. Um, did they run the two hundred last yesterday or? I missed that, bro. I was just doing the research on this article and I and I saw them race, so that was cool. I'm not sure if they did that. I know they got Sweet. a bunch of races left. Yeah. They run. Do, they both run the uh, the relays too, don't they? Yeah, 
Yeah, four by one hundred. I think Jamaica's won the last the last one or maybe the last two. Uh, the relays are my favorite, man. Oh, because the you still got so that fun. speed, yeah. but you have the technicality of the teamwork, and then there's yeah. the strategy, you know, who you're putting where. There's a, yeah, uh, there's a ton of technique and timing. It's all about timing, and you got to really practice those hands handoffs. I mean, we used to practice quite a bit for the 4 by one I wasn't – they took me off the 4 by one in high school, even though I was – at my small school, I was the fastest kid because they, they needed me in individual races more that'd be, that we would – have a better chance of meddling in mm -hmm. but when when i was like a freshman and sophomore i did the uh the hundred re relay or the four by one a lot more and it's just practice and practice and once you i mean i was usually anchor but the mid the guys in the middle so like the second and third guy they have to handle two handoffs so they got to be oh that's good. a good point yeah um and each each person has Different, well, at this level, everyone's running pretty much like the same speed. But in high school, everyone's running kind of at different speeds. So you got to get really used to uh, the guy that you're taking the handoff from. And then a lot of times you'll use audio cues. And, but this is, you know, at amateur level, audio cues to let the person know in front of you when sure. to go. Right. Uh, but a lot of times in practice, we would have markers like a, a little cone. Once you, once, you know the the you guy with the baton, get there. yeah, got to that cone. You would take off full speed. And it yeah, it was crazy. A lot of those are blind handoffs. The guy is sprinting, but he keeps one arm back. Yeah, to, you don't you know, look like, back in the four by one. You do. You typically crazy. look back in the four by four because it's, I mean, it's not quite as a high speed it's race, fast, and right. and handoffs aren't as crucial. Handoffs are everything in the four by one. I mean, one. if you if you have like a, a decently fast team against a really fast team but your handoffs are are perfect you're going to beat them every time so yeah speaking of that the girls ran that four by 100 last night in the semis i think and they are a couple of nights ago and they crushed it so they're 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 um uh, they're definitely going to win it for gold for sure for the four by one. Oh, that's awesome because jamaica has been uh, a powerhouse for the ladies for a long time didn't even come close bro i'm really? talking like yeah like five lengths at least Dude, that's sick but uh, yeah, we'll talk about the medal race here at the end, just a, a recap. But I got it pulled up. Um, cool. All right, so uh, Monica, Monica Puig, Puerto Rican, wins her first gold medal for her country. Uh, and it came kind of as a surprise for her. So uh, I'd never have heard of this lady, but I don't follow women's tennis all that much. Typically, all I hear from women, women's tennis is Serena Williams uh, because she's just unstoppable most of the time, but not in the Olympics. This. I don't know who Serena lost to, but uh, this girl ended up winning the whole thing, which is exciting for Puerto Rico. Um, first gold medal for yeah. them? Oh, it's huge. I think Ireland got their first gold medal too as well. Um, I think it might have been in rowing. But, yeah, there's a lot of countries getting their first gold medals. But uh, Puerto Rico is close to home for us, so that's why we're going to talk about it a bit. That, and we, we, we pretend that we're – tennis expert so when we see stuff like that oh, it's yeah. pretty cool well, yeah. to hear I mean, about this but is, this is our amateur amateur profession so yeah and that's a good pride for that country there's a lot of turmoil right now especially financially in that country that they're really struggling there's a yeah. debt crisis that they're dealing with right. and stuff so that uh that definitely helps lift up the country it's a beautiful country i went there i went hiking they have a national forest there that's protected it's like one of the top forests, top five forests in the world or something like that called el, el junque is gorgeous gorgeous man um so yeah man there's some pride in that country for sure yeah so that's pretty cool i mean i have now i have family that are puerto rican um through cassie's side so uh it's cool i'm sure they're, they're real excited about that it's bro you can go hop skipping away for a couple hundred bucks and be there and oh, yeah. you're in a whole different place yeah and we you know we have one of our our members at the gym uh she's from there and She's told me several times that I could stay with her dad if I ever wanted to go down there. So, who it's knows? cheap, bro. Oh, yeah, it's cheap. But, uh, yeah, it's cool. So, moving on. So, the Olympics are typically about uh, putting division aside, uniting the world as one underneath uh, good sportsmanship. Uh, and judo, out of all the sports, is probably, you know, maybe – 
Yeah, probably might be the most honorable sport in the Olympics uh, with all of its um, tradition. tradition. Um, there's a lot of bowing um, and just a lot of respect for your opponent, regardless of who they are, where they come from. And then we just saw a despicable display of pride and uh, ignorance, I guess you could say, uh, by an Egyptian judo player who got his ass handed to him by an Israeli. So, I mean, you have uh, a Jew and a Muslim. The Jew offers, you know, like the traditional respects and honor to his opponent that he just destroyed. Uh, and the, the Muslim threw a fit and didn't even shake his hand and wouldn't even bow to him. So if you haven't seen the video, uh, viewers, definitely, definitely try to find the, the video. Um, it's just really, really sad, and it just tells a, a bigger story what's happening in the world. So, Yeah, and, and the article assumes that, the, you know, that was going to happen, that he had prefaced, the coach had prefaced to his athlete that he was probably not going to shake his hands afterward. You know, so the athlete wasn't surprised that he did it, but it's still a shame. I mean, at the heart of the Olympics, we're looking at unifying countries, you know, where we, we believe that sport is able to unify people uh, because of its social its social nature, its ability to bomb through a sport. Uh, it just kills it. And it's an outlier. I mean, you don't see that a lot, but man, when you do see it, it, it definitely breaks your heart. Right. Uh, especially with what's going on in the Middle East and, and the struggle that they've had there. This is a great opportunity to, to help them and move them in the right direction. Right. So and it's, it's tough, it's man. It's sad that, you know, as much as you don't like someone, you can have some commonality in the sport you're playing together. Um, and this guy still wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, he, I mean, it's just it's total racism, and it's just sad. Sad to see that. At the, at the on the like international stage you know but. yeah I mean you got to understand you're representing your country so it doesn't matter how you feel or what happens bro you have that logo you have your country's logo right flag right on your on your uniform you have to it, it uh, the sports supposed to transcend politics and people believe that like they're not together but they are you right. know and it makes his country look bad so um, yeah and I'm yeah. You know, I wasn't around back in the day when, like, the Soviet Union during the Cold War and the United States would, you know, compete in the Olympics together. And I'm sure there was, there were some, you know, hopeful signs of sportsmanship that would hopefully, you know, spill over to the political world. But, um, yeah, this is just a, a real sad realization of, of the current state of, of our world. But, hey, um, for the most part, the most part, uh, people in the Olympics just love each other and they do a really good job of showing that respect and that courtesy and that dignity to, to each other. So I agree. I agree. Uh, and then the last, the last article we'll touch on is this, this is something you know a little bit more about. So I'll let you take it away. Well, yeah, I mean, it's called cupping. I dealt with this when I got licensed for massage and, uh, we did some work with cupping. Um, but we're talking about it because we've seen some bruises on athletes lately, specifically Michael Phelps and some other. There were some uh, some notorious or, or famous cyclists that had these bruising on their shoulders and arms. And, uh, you know, viewers were very uh, concerned or curious about what those were from. And so uh, this method called cupping is uh, pretty common in massage therapy, but it's starting to move into, you know, high performing athletes as a way for recovery to dealing with stressed muscles. Um, there's not a lot of research on it. When you look at actual studies that have done to see that improvement, this practice goes back, they say as old as 1500 BC, that's, that's crazy. Um, which is pretty crazy in itself. Um, you know, I reached out to one of my buddies who's a PT guy now, and he says that it's actually that it's growing in popularity and it does have its effect uh, as well because it's not a, as abrasive uh, as some of these other methods, but it's just a complement to what other people are doing. Uh, some of the, the, the point, bullet points here is that it creates this vacuum effect at the surface 
at that skin surface area. So it helps kind of break up connective tissue or help elasticity through those muscles. Um, but what you're seeing on the surface is what happens when you create that suction. Uh, the way it's being done is it starts to break up some of the capillaries there and causes bruising. Um, but there is no painful. It's not painful. There is no side of that. That's probably the only uh, aesthetic side effect. Um, but there is no physical mm -hmm. um, side effect to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I. It hasn't been seen in sports until like this year. I've the, I think the first time I saw it was in the CrossFit Games this year. A few athletes were getting yep. it done. Um, I'm just like, what the heck? I think like James Hobart had it or something. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. what the heck is that? Um, you know, obviously you kind of, you were familiar with it, but yeah, I mean, essentially it's, it's similar to a deep tissue massage, but it, it's probably not going to be as, um, like you said, abrasive on the, the tissues beneath the skin. Um, so it's going to help release the muscles uh, especially if there's knots and stuff in there, um, without, without bruising the tissue itself. Now you said there's, there's bruising at the surface, but that's, that's just a side effect and there's no pain to it. It's, right. ju it's just like a controlled bruise is all it is. So, right. Yeah. I just, you know, for me, we talked about this years ago, with that, uh, that kinesio and you saw some of that in the, in the cross veins as well. Could you say that again? Just... You were breaking up. The kinesio tape reminds me of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where athletes were using that stuff. For me, it's, you might have a, you know, what we believe more than anything, what this does is give them, you know, more of a, like, mental confidence more than anything. Because there's no way the cupping or the kinesio tape is giving you a immense amount of increased performance. No. It's just not doing that. But I think right. what it does, it gives them ease of mind that there's serum therapy being done or to those areas. But, uh I don't know. I, I'm under that impression with competition that you don't change anything up that you don't do in competition. And what we saw with a lot of athletes is that they were they're starting to use this method during the competition versus having done this method mm -hmm. way before that and then coming into the games is using that as that's what I do as a form of recovery. Not like, oh my God, I'm really sore. What can I do today to make it to the next day? And then all of a sudden they're implementing all these new uh uh, strategies to help them recover that they've never done in training. So that's probably my only beef with it. Same thing with the kinesio tape. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but, but what I'm saying is that you shouldn't like start putting kinesio tape on in competition all of a sudden because other people are doing it. <laughs> yeah, don't jump on the the hype train. It's, yeah. yeah, and then when you're seeing, there's no way that many people are using cupping. You know, and then all of a sudden you're watching the Olympics and people are getting cupped left and right. And you're like, what's going on here, bro? I'm looking at a bunch of bruised athletes. Athlete, you know what like I mean? Athletes in every sport, bro, like getting cupped left and right. It's like, wait a second. Does, yeah, it doesn't like, make sense. You didn't you didn't get to the Olympics by cupping, you know? But, exactly, and that's the beef I have with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess we'll finish up things. Uh, we have let's let's pick up the metal tracker here. Oh my goodness! So uh, I think last week I, I had no idea what the metal the metal count would get to. I was assuming maybe like forty to fifty for the United States. Um, but looking at the the metal race right now, USA is at sixty nine total. Twenty six are gold. So more than a third of our medals are gold but it's pretty cool because uh we got 26 gold 21 silver 22 bronze that's that's pretty that's pretty well balanced there china's pretty well balanced great britain's in third place but they have mostly golds and silvers what's the medal count for second and third so 69 for usa then 45 for china and then 38 for great britain so it's just we're just demolishing people love it but yeah, and then we got track, so we're still pretty dominant in track. What are right. some of those other bigger sports right. coming up? Well, we had a we had a uh, a lady shot putter win gold, so that was pretty. I cool. saw that. We just won a, a, one of our first uh, Americans boxers. We didn't no. medal at all in twenty uh, in twenty twelve in boxing, and we just got our first uh, gold medalist. So that was cool. Wow, that's crazy. That's awesome. But yeah, it's interesting. You know, I'd, I'd love to see like. Someone could pull up numbers. The United States is a fairly small country. Uh, we have a lot of medals. China's enormous, right? They have two billion people. Yeah. And they have maybe three quarters of medals we do. 
And then Great Britain, which is a really small country. I mean, I don't even know how many million, maybe 100 million people there. Uh, and they have about a little bit more than half the medals we do. So that's pretty impressive for Yeah, that Great is pretty Britain. impressive for them per capita. If yeah, if we're talking about medals per capita, that's they're that's they're probably darn, winning, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, but all right, man, I think we're going to finish cool, it up for this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week probably recapping the Olympics. It should be over by the end of this week. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for